So now that we know what an alternating series um, is, we now want to look at a convergence test that specifically applies to alternating series, and that's the alternating series test. So the alternating series test says, given an alternating series of either of the two forms, either the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 bn, or the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n bn, which is just some notation to say either the signs are alternating positive, negative, positive, negative, or they're alternating negative, positive, negative, positive, with the bn part being positive. Okay, so all of the sign information is um, in terms of this negative 1 to a power of n, the, the other part is positive. Okay, so if we have something that is of that kind of form, then if we have the following two conditions, if bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn for all n bigger than some big N, so what does that mean? That just means that the terms are eventually decreasing. The magnitude of the terms you can think of it as, or just the, the positive part ignoring the sign part, is eventually decreasing. And the limit as n goes to infinity of bn is 0, then the series converges. Okay. And it's really important that we check both of these conditions for the alternating series test. Okay, because it's possible to meet one condition and not the other. The other thing to keep in mind is the alternating series test is only a test for convergence. Okay, so the alternating series test can't show a series diverges. Okay, if um, you have an alternating series that meets both of these conditions, it converges. If you have an alternating series and one of these two conditions fails, that means you have to use a different test. It may mean the series diverges, but um, we don't know that until we try another test. Okay, so the alternating series test cannot be used to show a series convert. Um, excuse me, diverges. It can only be used to show a series converges. So I just want to have us think about the conditions for this test for a minute. So notice that we did have two separate conditions, um, both that the bn's had to decrease and that they converged to zero. So we just want to think about um, the fact that it, it is possible to have one of those conditions without the other. Okay, so this is saying, is it possible to have a sequence that decreases but does not converge to zero? Well. If we think about the following example, let's say I had an alternating series that was the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so the bn part is 1 plus 1 over n. So let's just look at a graph that plots the terms here of bn. Okay, notice that when n is 1, um, B1 here, the first term would be equal to 2. Okay. Um, when n is 2, I'd have 1 plus a half, so it'd be 1 and a half. When n is 3, I'd have 1 plus a third. When n is 4, it'd be 1 plus a fourth. Okay. So we see that those terms would be get, getting closer and closer to 1 as they decrease, but they wouldn't be converging to 0. Okay. So we want to notice here that that bn is decreasing, but the limit as n goes to infinity of bn is not zero. So although this is an alternating series here, the AST doesn't apply. Okay, because we only meet one of the two conditions. Um, if I wanted to analyze whether this series here converged or diverged, in this case, I actually could use the divergence test. Okay, so notice that um, the bn's here are actually going to 1, okay, and I have this alternating sign, which means the terms are alternately going to be going to negative 1 and 1. So the limit 
as n goes to infinity here of negative 1 to the n, 1 plus 1 over n um, would be does not exist, so the series would diverge by the divergence test. Okay, so if you get that limit does not exist, well, it's certainly not going to zero. Okay, so what about the other switch of the, the conditions? Is it possible to have a sequence that converges to zero but doesn't decrease? Well, the idea behind this is that um, your terms are oscillating, but maybe they're oscillating less and less and less each time so that they get closer and closer to zero. So that's just a um, sort of the idea, but here's an example. Let's say I had the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n um, bn, where bn equaled two different things depending on whether n was even or n was odd, just to give us an example. So let's say that bn is 2 over n plus 1 when n is odd, and 4 over n squared when n is even. Okay, so what does this give us in terms of um, what this series might look like? Well, when n is 1, we're in the n is odd case, so that would give me, um, let's see, let me make, I'm going to have this alternate in the other order, positive, negative, positive, negative. So let's say this is n plus 1, so this would be 1. And then when n is 2, well, I have um, 4 over 2 squared, so that would be 1, so I'd have minus 1. Let's see, when n is 3, I'd have a half. When n is 4, I'd end up with a fourth. Okay, let's just go a little bit further. When n is 5, this would be 1 third. n is 6, you'd have 4 over 36, so 1 ninth, okay, etc. So what I just wanted us to see in here is notice that I have 1 and then 1, well, nothing's decreasing between those two. Um, if we just think about the magnitude of the terms instead of the sign, from 1 to a half it goes down, um, from a half to a fourth it does go down, but then from a fourth to a third, a third's bigger than a fourth, and then one ninth is smaller than a third, so it's doing some bouncing back and forth, but the terms themselves are going to zero. Okay, so we just want to see how we can have one of these conditions without the other, so AST doesn't apply again. I want to take um, a good amount more work to kind of analyze this particular series, but we know that we couldn't use the alternating series test. Okay, um, so let me see. I just want to note that Bn does go to zero, but Bn doesn't decrease. Okay, so this is just showing us why we have to take the time to check both of those conditions, because it's possible that you could have one and not the other. Okay, so a little bit more background on why this, this test works, okay? Help us um, sort of see why these two conditions should imply convergence. Why does that make sense? And then we'll start looking at some examples. So what do we know for the alternating series test? Well, we know that Bn is greater than zero. Okay, the Bn's are greater than zero. The Bn's converge to zero and the Bn's are decreasing. Those are the, the conditions. So why should that mean that our sum, our alternating sum here actually converges? So I just want to give you a picture so you have an idea of why this test makes sense. So if we look at the partial sums, let's remember our definition of, of convergence of a series has to do with what's happening with the partial sums. The first uh, partial sum here would just be the first term. So you just sort of think of going over B1 units here to get my first um, partial sum. The second partial sum would be B1 minus B2, okay? Notice this, since the Bn have to be decreasing, B2 has to be smaller than B1. So my second partial sum, when I subtract B2, has to be somewhere over here. When I do the third one, that'll be B1 minus B2 plus B3. So I'd have to go over a little bit, but not as much as I did before, because those have to decrease. I give myself a little bit more room here in the picture. Okay, so I go over some amount B3 to get to S3. S4 has to be B1 minus B2 plus B3 minus B4. Okay, so I gotta go back this direction minus that B4 
get to S4, okay? And so we notice as we're gonna add or subtract additional terms here, that partial sum is going to be getting closer and closer to some value between um, Sn and Sn plus one, okay? So it just sort of seems reasonable from our picture, from these conditions, that Sn converges. So this isn't a formal proof, but it gives you an idea of why those two conditions should mean that the sum is converging. Okay, we see that um, Sn and Sn plus one look like they're going towards the same value. Okay, I'd end up with S5 over here, um, or excuse me, S5 over here, then S6, et cetera. So we're, we're narrowing in on what the actual value of the sum is. Okay, so this gives you a little bit of the theory behind why this test makes sense, why we do need those both conditions. So keep watching the next videos to see some examples of applying the alternating series test.